saw the sun, then he said, my son Krishna. As soon as he said that, then the chains that were binding him became open. The doors of the prison house opened up and Vasudev Maharaj, he took baby Krishna, uh, Machuresh Krishna, upon his head and was going towards Nanda Gokul. Because so, but, Krishna had told baby. Baby Krishna had said, don't keep me here, take me to Nanda Gokul. So Bhagavatam described this. When Vasudev Maharaj was going to Gokul, that time there was one yellow jackal who was Yellow. No, he was yellow. Jackal. Jackal. <laughs> Only jackal will do. Anyway, in Gurudev's temples, it's always yellow. So, <laughs> so that jackal who was in color, he was Sankarshan. Yogamaya. Yogamaya. Yogamaya followed, and he followed that because the Yamuna was very deep. Deva how he will cross the Yamuna. That jackal went first, and he followed. Then Yamuna, she is a great Bratan Takasyapat Abhipatan Harini. She is a very great devotee of Krishna. She wanted to see her Lord, but she could not because he was high in the basket. Therefore, she swelled up, and when she was about to go over, then Krishna extended his toe and touched her. Then she, then she um, subsided. So Goswamis have described one explanation I have heard. That time that Krishna, Machuras Krishna, went in the Yamuna, and original Krishna came in the basket. One explanation is that. So, Bhagavatam describes this. But at the same time, Bhagavatam describes in a hidden way the appearance of Krishna in Gokul. In the language of Guruji, he says, Krishna appeared in Mathura, but Krishna took birth in Gokul. There, because we are Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we are not so much concerned Okay, there's better language I could use. We are not so much concerned with the opulence of Krishna. We prefer to look at the sweetness of Krishna. Therefore, Krishna manifested his opulence in Mathura, but in Vrindavan. As Narayan. As Narayan, yeah. Vishnu. As Swadhyamud. Uh, as Swadhyamud. Because but, he came in the form of 400 and... But in Vrindavan, he manifested even more opulence, but that was covered by the sweetness of Krishna's childhood form. This is not completely described in Bhagavatam, but our Goswamis have extracted it. So, Sugad, so there in, Go, in Nanda Gokul, Yasoda had also given birth to a son. It described even in old age, Nanda Yasoda had not had a child. But Nanda used to describe, Oh Devi, one very attractive, beautiful boy is in my mind. And then Yasoda would say, I also have seen the same boy. How can we bring him to this world? Then Nanda Baba suggested, well, Dasarad Maharaj also wanted a son by performing yagya, fire sacrifice. He got four very good sons. Then Sri Yasoda Devi said, but the child we want is millions of times even more attractive and beautiful than Ram. Then we cannot get that child by sacrifice. Therefore they performed the vrat of ikadasi, duodasi. They began fasting on ikadasi. Therefore, tomorrow is a courtesy. This is Krishna. Jan this is Bhakti Janami, the appearance place of Bhakti. Therefore, that child came in the womb of Yasoda, and described on the Astami at midnight. Then she gave birth to two children. One child who was first was Yoga Maya. No, no. no? First was Krishna, and second Yoga. Then was Yoga Maya. Therefore, she is called the small sister of Krishna. Anuja. Vishnu Anuja. That's the small daughter of, a uh, small sister of Krishna. Therefore, when Vasudev Maharaj came, he took his Krishna, put it there, because Yasoda, she was by the influence of Yoga Maya, she was unconscious. Therefore, he could not see the Yoga Maya there. He could only see, he, uh, he could not see Nanda Nanda and Krishna. He could only see Yoga Maya. Therefore, he took his Krishna, put him down and took yoga maya upon his head and went back to Mathura. So, when Kamsa heard the crying, wah, wah, then he came down, oh no, it's not a boy, it's a girl. Those demigods have cheated me again. <laughs> then he, he thought better to be safe than sorry. He took the child and went to dash it on the ground. It flew out of his head and gave him a kick in the head. And she took the form of Astabuj Durga, eight-armed Mahamaya. 
because Krishna, Kamsa hates Krishna, he is against and opposed to Krishna, then how he can see Maha, Yoga Maya, even though Maya has, she is one, but she appears in two surups. Those who are opposed to Krishna, she appears as Mahamaya. Therefore she said, fool, and chastised him, and disappeared in the end. And told that, oh, your killer, killer has taken, taken birth Kamsa. somewhere else. Foolish Kamsa. Foolish Kamsa. So, meanwhile, Yasoda, isn't it? She came and she saw that, that sorry, Vasudev's Krishna, when he put it down, it merged in the original form of Krishna, that is Nanda Nandan. Devi Yasoda, because of the influence of Yoga Maya, could not understand she had given birth to two children. Neither Vasudev Maharaj could understand that Yasoda had two children also. All was covered. So, to Yas well, Yasoda had given birth to, she gave birth to Nanda Nandan, then how much happy she was. Meanwhile, Nanda Baba, who had been paid, he was at the ghost shell waiting. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Then one servant came. Baba, time to put some color in your hair. Time to tie your paguri. You have given birth to a son. Therefore, Nanda Baba, he felt so much ecstatic. Isn't it? And he had a big festival. That is called Nandotsav. Nanda Kiya Nanda Bayo Jai Kane Kauti. Nanda Kiya Nanda Bayo Jai Kane Calm down. They were very happy. They began dancing. So Sukadev Goswami, he was so happy when he was describing to Pariksit Maharaj the appearance of Krishna because Pariksit Maharaj was from Chatriya family. Then Pariksit Maharaj wanted to build, cover the fact that Krishna was actually a gopa. He wanted to explain to Pariksit Maharaj a little bit that Krishna was a Chatriya. But Sukadeva Goswami was so happy at the appearance of Krishna, he said, Nanda Stuat Majat, when he explained the birth of Krishna. Krishna is directly, the, Krishna is the direct son of Nanda Baba. Nanda Stuat Majat. Also, <coughs> Nanda Baba, before the cutting of the umbilical cord, one must give charity before the cutting of the umbilical cord, not, not before. Therefore, Nanda distributed 900,000 cows, mm -hmm. huge mountains. How much? 900,000. Nine, nine, nine lakhs. Nine lakhs. Nine lakhs. Nine lakhs. Nine, 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 nine lakh cows he distributed in charity. Those cows, because at one time someone gave a cow to Gurudev, Durvasa Rishi. It only had three teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and Gurudev said, in Kali Yuga, people give those cows to the sadhus. The cows are useless. <laughs> But Nanda Baba's cows were not like that. All were, had their first calf with golden horns and silver plated hoofs covered in silver. 900,000 cows he gave. Even Baba gave the own jewelry of his own neck to the Brahmanas. To Brahmanas he gave mountains of honey and sesame seeds. And he said, all bridge Vasis be pleased. All bridge Vasis bless my son with a long life. Therefore that was Nandotsa. So, Thank you. Then Putin was coming, but I will stop up to do it. Are you, you, Nemi Maharaj, about Putin? <coughs> Microphone, please. Putna, Putna kill. Tangling, tangling life. Jnana jnana sasya, jnana jnana shraka, Jakshurun militang jena, tasmai shi gribe namaha. Vanchakalpatru bhyascha, kipasindhu bhyayircha, Bhutitanam bhavne bhyo, Vaishnave bhyo namo namaha. Of my obeisances to my Diksha Guru, Shishi Mabakvidan Swami Maharaj Shri Prabhupada, and to my beloved Shikshan Sanyas Guru, Rupanuga Bara Shishi Mabakvidan to Narango Swami Maharaj. To all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis present, headed by Chitandika Hare Krishna. So, when Krishna was a very small baby, Kansa became very anxious. So he began sending demons into Braj to kill Krishna. 
Să puți în alt fel librăci, te prefer. Those who are taken birth in ten days or ten days after. So he heard that the, the uh, his worshipable deity Durga, she had told him that your child, your killer has been born somewhere else. So then he wanted to exterminate his killer. So he sent his messengers and extremely noxious associates everywhere, killing the small children, small babies. So one of these was Putana. Putana was very, very competent. She was very, very powerful, which before this had happened, we should know, first of all, Kangsa is very powerful. Sometimes he used to throw elephants around in sport. One day, Kobalai Apida came into his camp and he threw back where he came from. So he was not an ordinary person, not an ordinary demon. So he was fighting with Putana, and Putana was defeating him. So he said, I think we should be brother and sister. So we'll look after each other. So then he sent Putana to Braj. So she came into Braj, although she was an extremely wicked, ferocious demoness. These demons, they like to take small children they kill them, they suck their blood, and then they eat their flesh. So horrendous personalities. So Putana was like this. So she, but she took the form of an extremely beautiful lady. So beautiful that everybody thought that she was a goddess of fortune. They were stunned by her beauty. So she walked through Braj, twirling her clay lotus. Everyone, even when she came to Jashoda's house, Jashoda thought, oh, I'm Krishna's baby, or really this is his mother. She became so much wondered. So Putana said, oh, I want to give this beautiful baby. I want to love this baby. So she took on her lap. She had put poison on her breast. So when Krishna saw uh, Putana coming, he was just six days old. Very, very small baby. He closed his eyes. So our Acharyas have explained, why did Krishna close his eyes? One thing was, because here's a demoness in the form of a lady, and he knows he's going to have to kill her. So this is inauspicious. Another thing is that uh, he didn't want to see anything so inauspicious as this demoness. Putana came in, and she saw Krishna, and she could see this very powerful baby, like a sword in a, a scabbard. So she took Krishna on her lap and put him to the breast. She had this very, very deadly poison on her breast. Krishna, still with his eyes closed, he began to suck her breast. But he didn't just suck the milk, if she had any milk. She didn't just suck the milk, but she sucked out her life air. He sucked out her life air. She began screaming, oh baby, child, child, get off, get off. She was trying to pull, pull Krishna off. Later on, when Krishna was older, Mother Yashoda, uh, when she was feeding Krishna and the milk boiled over on the stove. So she said, oh, get down, I have to attend to the milk. And Krishna was hanging on with all, with all his might, with his arms, with like a baby, a monkey, with his arms, with his legs, and also with his mouth. And Mother Yashoda just put, with one arm, put him off and put him on the floor. Get down. But Putana, being so strong, more powerful than Kansa, who's more powerful than 10,000 elephants, couldn't pull Krishna off. No love. So Krishna is thinking, oh, you come to me. I don't want to let you go. And then Putana, she began to fly away. She assumed her real strength. She flew off to Mathura because she was hoping that Kansa could save her. But she didn't make it. And she fell down on the ground. Actually, she fell down in, in Kansa's pleasure garden. And broke everything. So she assumed this huge form, eight miles long or twelve miles long? Twelve miles long. So gigantic. Then Mother Yashoda fell down in a faint. Everyone was so perturbed. Very, very inauspicious signs were coming. And they all ran and ran and ran. And then they found this gigantic body. Instead of a very beautiful lady, her teeth were like. Uh, the plowshares on a plow. Her mouth was like a cave. 
Uh, her breasts are like mountains. Mm, what else? Huh? Abdomen like a lake. Very horrendous look. And there was Krishna simply playing on her breast. So they took him off and they dusted him with dust from a cow's tail. And then they performed uh, purific purifying ceremonies. And Mother Yashoda chanted elaborate, chanted elaborate mantras on every part of Krishna's body to protect him from further harm. In the meantime, Nanda Baba, he'd gone to Mathura because he thought previously he'd been a little lax in paying his taxes. He really hadn't respected Kansa Maharaj. But now he thought, I've got a baby. I want to make sure there's no trouble with Kansa, so we go and pay some taxes. So he'd gone to Mathura. And in Matra, he met with Vasudev. Vasudev didn't want to let on that he knew that Krishna was in Braj, in, in Vrindavan. So he, he said, oh, I'm very happy to hear you've had a, a son in your old age. How is he? And how is Rohini's baby? Like this. And then he said, you know, there's going to be very serious disturbances in Gokul. I think you should go straight back. So Nanda Baba then, he took these words very seriously and they began to go back and then on the way back they saw this gigantic body and he said, oh, Vasudev must be expert astrologer. He could see these disturbances coming. So after this, they stacked up, they cut up the body, they stacked up wood against the body and burnt it and there was a very beautiful aroma because the body of Putana had been completely purified. They had been touched by Krishna and Krishna had sucked her breast also. And wonderful to relate that because Krishna, although she came in a very treacherous way, offering a, a semblance of maternal love to Krishna, but still Krishna accepted her in the capacity of a woman, a mother. So she got a place in Golok Vrindavan, not Gokul in Braj, but in Vaikuntha Vrindavan, where, the, where uh, Krishna's worship in Aishwarya, she got, a, she got the uh, position as assistant to Mother Yashoda there. So afterwards, Uddhav, he was very astounded. He said, Aho Bakiyam, oh, just see that Putana, she came trying to poison Krishna, and still Krishna gave her a place just like Mother, as a, a nurse. So who is more merciful? Of whom else should I want to take shelter? Because we want to take shelter of a very merciful personality, so most merciful personality means that he'll give the most mercy. So here we're situate, situated at the lotus feet of most merciful personality. And with this I shall end my speech. Hare Krishna. We have one announcement. Sri Padmada Maharaj is reminding that tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock a.m. the initiations, the devotees who will be taking initiation from Srila Gurudev, they must prepare themselves and come to Srila Gurudev's house prior to that time at about 8.30 a.m. And they should be prepared with uh, clean cloth, tilak. Uh, the men should shave their heads before they receive initiation. The doors over here are to remain open always. Over here on the right side, the doors are to remain open always. For those for whom it is too cold and too windy, please seek another spot where you can sit where the draft will not affect you. We are also keeping the doors and windows over here open. And the other announcement is kindly do not <coughs> kindly do not remove any flowers on the property here. It is considered to be very disrespectful. It is actually stealing. Please do not do this. This will damage our image here. And uh, final problem. Ram Das Prabhu has lost his uh, bag with a, a mobile phone somewhere here in this area where the stands are. If anyone finds it, kindly bring it to him or give it to me. It is a dark blue bag. There is some money and a mobile telephone. And and another thing to be prepared for is that there will be a dance performance in a few minutes. In a few minutes there will be a dance performance. 
So when that will be announced, we are asking everyone to stand up here in the middle section and go back about 10 meters, that means 25, 30 feet, so that, no, not quite that much, maybe, maybe about five, six meters back here in the front. We'll have to move back about five, six meters, and that will have to happen very quickly. So everyone here in the hall must cooperate and allow all the devotees here in the front to move backwards at least five, six meters so that the dance can take place in front of Sri Gurudev. I will announce that shortly. Thank you. You want to do it over where you are now? Does everyone see Induleka Didi? Yes. And that's where she is. She has just pointed out where she wants to perform the dance. Can you do it again, please? Can you please show us which area you want to have cleared? Uh huh. All right. Maybe everyone can see my wife. Dance about Lord Krishna and his playful aspect. Um, it's a little difficult for me to describe it holding a microphone, but I'll do my best. So basically, a gopi finds Lord Krishna in her house after he's been stealing some butter. So she catches hold of him and she takes him to his mother to complain. She says, your son, Krishna, all he's interested in is going around the village flirting with the girls. What are we to do if we question him? He just has crooked answers for us. For example, one time he came to me and offered me a ripe fruit. He said, please take this fruit. I said, no. He begged me, please take it. This is the ripest, juiciest fruit you'll ever taste. Still, I didn't want it. Then he begged me, please take this fruit. So. Rather unwillingly, I took it. I wasn't sure whether I should eat it. And sure enough, he snatched it away from me. On another occasion, he came to me with a beautiful flower. He offered me the flower. I, I definitely didn't want it this time. So he said, this flower smells so beautiful. Please take it. He said, he started to cry. And then he looked at me from the corners of his lotus eyes. And he said, cover your eyes and I will put this flower into your hair. So I did. And I waited for quite a long time. And then when I looked, he'd given it to another girl. <laughs> Sometimes when we're plaiting our long hair, he pulls it from behind. And when we turn around to see who's the culprit, he hides. And then he runs away, picks up a stone, and breaks our butter pots. Usually on those days we're dressed in our finest clothing, and still he throws mud all over our clothes. He laughs. And then when we turn around to look at him, he acts as though it's got nothing to do with him. Then in the final stanza, she says, When Krishna plays his flute, the sound is so beautiful and so enchanting that when it reaches our ears, we become like drunk people. And we fall down in a trance. Sometimes our mouths fall open, and at that time, Krishna picks up ants and puts them in our mouths. <laughs> he thinks that's very funny. She says, have you ever seen, heard of anything like this in the universe? And yet still, even though you're so naughty and you cause us so much anguish, you are always our playful naughty Krishna.
good. This is Odisha Nitya. Bharata Natyam. This is the tradition of India. From old days it is coming. Arjun was very expert in Guruji. He learnt it from Urvashi. And others are, he so, he taught, taught this to Uttara. In this way we see that it is from ancient time. Very good art.
First of all, my millions of dandot pranam in the lotus seat of my Paramaradhyatam Nitya Leela Pravishtong Vishnupad Sri Srimad Bhakti Pragyan Kesoga Swami Maharaj. And same in the lotus feet of my Shiksha Guru, Nitya Leela Pravishtong Vishnupad Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. We are now explaining how Sukhdev Goswami is giving Upadesh, explaining the three pastimes of Krishna. Up to ninth canto, when he heard, then Parikshit Maharaj became very happy. And then he told, Nibhartat Nibhartatar Shai Rupa Giyamana Bhausadhat Sotri Mano Bhiramat Kahuttam Slok Gunanubadat Birajjet Bina Pasupnat Oh, I am very fortunate. Really, the course of Brahmin was not course, but it is like a vardhan, benediction. benediction, and it is very rare to see you Brahmins and you Rishis Muni like you high exalted personality of devotees, great devotees. Without, without any invitation, you came here. Only by seeing them, you, by seeing you, all that person will see you, they will be liberated, Krishna Bhakti will come. And if they will speak something, glory of Krishna, his sweet pastime, then what to do? If anyone take the feet, water, washing, Oh, and keep it in our head. Oh, their life will be successful. So, Nibhattatar Shai Rupagi Yamana Bhavosh Sadat Srotri Bhamano Kahavuttam Sloka Gunanu Bada Virajjit Bina Pasukna Oh, you Nibhartha Tarsai, your all desires of worldly to taste 
has been gone away. You are nirbhakta tarse. And you are speak, speaking from your core of heart the sweet past tense of Krishna. So if a person like you is speaking the glory of sweet past tense of Krishna, that is Shwati Manovhirama, Bhau Sadhat. This is the Rambarn of all diseases. Inflable medicine. Inflable medicine. Medicine. Achuk. Never failure. 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 Understand? If anyone is hearing Katha, not from others, whose desire is still in their heart. So many desire to test, enjoy all these things, worldly things. From their mouth, not. Only like you, or your, in your guidance, anyone, those who have actually not a gandha, smell. a smell of worldly desires. That Harikatha, like a fountain coming automatically. Tasmin Mahan Mukharita, Madhuvish Charitra, Piyus Ases, Parita Sravanti, Taji Pimantin Nipagad Karnai, Tanna Ispishati, Asanasi Tina Soka Bhaya Moha. Coming like a mountain, like Ganges river from Mount Sarovar. And who will take or who will dive in that Harikatha? What will be? These Harikatha, Shroti Manobhirama, very testful in hearing. And if you know the meaning, with meaning you know that it is very, very anandadayak from your heart. What ananda? Pleasing to your heart. Pleasing to your heart. So I think in this world, who are unfortunate person, those who don't want to hear Harikatha from them, they have no taste in Harikatha. Only Self killer. The one to kill himself. I think that to suicide or to to cut anyone, this is not suicide. so suicide. By not hearing harikatha like this, avoiding, neglecting. By this, what will be? Oh. Lacks and lacks, your life will be gone. In pain, you'll have to come in Narak. Hellish planet. Hellish planet. Hellish planet. Hellish planet. So, how I can be deprived of this Harikatha? I must hear. Prabhu, I have left to drink water. I have left sleeping. I have no desire to take anything. I only want to take Harikatha from you and that is my water and my food. Nothing else. Because Nideha Madhyam Sulabham Surau so, plavam sukalpam guru karnadhar mayanu kulle nanabhaswate ritam uman bhavabdhim natare sa atmaha niti hamadam sulabham sulabham. This human body form is very rare. Even demigods, others, 
they want to be in this world in this form, human form. And this body is like a boat, very a strong boat. If only one, anyone, wish to ride on that boat, only wish, not riding, even. And if he is surrendered in the lotus foot of Guru Dev, this is main thing. If he surrender, then he comes as a pilot. Pilot of that bow. And if anyone prays me to whom? Krishna himself. Praying Krishna. Oh, Prabhu, be merciful to me. My boat should go in right direction. Then, by my mercy, satsangai will be achieved very soon. Really, the real satsang is very, very rare in this world. I know in Vrindavan, here and there, only for rupees, money, they do Bhagavad. Not out of mercy. But you, Sukhdev Goswami, not for this, or in your guidance, your in your line, they don't do. So even having so much good opportunity, if they don't wish to go across this bhavaro, endless pain of endless birth and death, they are also self-killer. So Prabhu, you should continue. I want to hear more and more sweet pastimes of Krishna. If anyone not doing anything, satang prasangama vividya sambhido, not hearing anything, not doing anything, only where sadhu are there and harikatha is going on, doing pranam to place, doing pranam to audience, being doing pranam to bhakta, speaker. speaker. And those who are managing, oh, only by hearing sweet pastimes of Krishna, all kind of knowledge will come. And also, detachment, detachment must come. And Krishna Prem will come. Then Sadha, Rati and Bhakti. Sadha, Sadhan Bhakti. Bhav Bhakti. And in the last Prem, Bhakti will come. And his life will be successful. So please go on telling. And then Sukhdev Goswami again began to tell. Hmm? What? <laughs> When Krishna became 30 days, age was 30 days, what happened? Oh, you, Sakatasu. Yeah, Right now, a lot of devotees are listening to you in person. You're telling the benefits of hearing from the pure devotee. So right now, you're being filmed, and then you go on a website, and many more hundreds or thousands of people will be able to hear you on the Internet. Is that as good or almost as good as hearing you in person? I'm here. And I'm telling them to do Harikatha. If they will tell anything incorrect, no, I mean if they. I. Abni, I can't bolchan sabai sunche. 
আর পরে ওইটাকে আবার দেখাবে পুরো ওয়ার্ল্ডে তো আপনারা ডাইরেক্ট শোনা আর পরে ভিডিওতে শোনা টেবিলে দেখবে सेम এফেক্ট কি আলাদা এফেক্ট নট सेम এফেক্ট ডাইরেক্ট হিয়ারিং ইজ বোথ গো Ya yeah. 